Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Right. Thank you. That's good. We are in session number three of this first week. We are almost done with the first week, so time is going really, really fast. So in a couple of days, we are going to say, oh, we are in the week number three or something like that because it's really fast. Um, we are going to start with the activity that we have for today. But we are going to um, wait for the others because we are going to divide the group into a small group because you are going to practice the questions that we have on the document. So we are going to wait maybe one or two minutes for other participants to um, come to the, to the meeting because we have that questions and that practice. And then we are going to develop the other topic that we have for today. So we are just going to wait a couple of minutes. And in that moment, I'm going to see or just let me see if I am having the sound okay. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, uh, remember that we have that activity, but in that case, we are going to wait for the others, but it is not like we're not going to see the other topic because uh, we don't have enough time to do that. We have just one hour, so we need to develop the other topic that we are going to see for today's uh, session. So we are going to talk about uh, the other topic while they are uh, getting in in the, in the meeting. So for today, we have another topic that is related to um, the way we talk about the nouns in this case. And we are going to talk about the count and non-count nouns. En esta sesión vamos a hablar de los nombres contables y los nombres no contables. So in that case, we are going to see what are the countable and non-countable nouns, and how can we uh, use it for um, the daily English that we are going to practice, or the way we can um, use those words when we are asking for something, and also we are going to see what are the categories that we have for count and non-count noun, and we are going to see some categories. Vamos a ver algunas categorías de los nombres contables, de los no contables. Um, vamos a ver ejemplos de palabras que podemos utilizar en estas categorías. And all of those things. So the first thing I'm going to do is to share the screen because we need to see the document in which I'm going to write the information that I have for today. So let's see. Um, we are going to begin with the topic, but then we are going to make like um, a break. We are going to have a break because we need to develop the exercise. So now we are going to begin, and then we are going to have the exercise. But it's not like we are not going to have it. So the topic is count and non-count. Nouns.
So we have the first thing, and it says we're going to divide this uh, topic in uh, different parts, and we are going to see the first one that is the the count nouns. La primera parte que vamos a desarrollar es count nouns. We're going to see what are those words and some specifications for that. So the first thing is count noun. And it says, the question, what is a count noun? For example, when we are uh, thinking about this topic or when we hear that name, what are some words that you can say when uh, people is asking for count nouns? ¿Qué palabras se nos vienen a la mente cuando hablamos de los count nouns? Can you give me an example of those words? Nombres contables. Tell me, Victoria. I don't know if I am correct, but count nouns when you talk about a lot of, for example, a lot of peoples, many peoples, and something like that. Yes. In that case, you can count that people. There are something physical, and that's correct. We can use that example for count nouns. And in this case, when we are talking about count nouns, are things that we can uh, touch in some cases and have a list of numbers. For example, I have um, this one. I have cards, for example. Let me show you this card. This one. I have these cards. They are for a game for children, and I know that I have one, two, three, four, and I can count because I am touching it, and I know how many I have in this group of cards. So in that case, when you have something physical that you can count, obviously it's a count now. But now we are going to see more details about that topic. So, we have here. Count nouns can be separate. Into individual. So in this case, it says that count nouns can be separated into individual units and count. Podemos separarlos en unidades y contarlos, así como el ejemplo de las cartas. I have a group of cards. In this case, I have it like this. In this, um, in this thing, because they are inside. But if I need to count those cards, I need to take them out. Necesito sacarlas and count one by one. So in that case, this uh, count noun needs to be separated into individual units and counted to know how many we have about that um, thing. They usually have both a singular and plural form. They have both. We can have words in singular or we can have 
uh, these words are um, plural, but in that case, we know that they are um, counts, but uh, we have one, in that case, it's a singular, or we have a group of things that we can count those, uh, those things. Most English nouns are count nouns. Most English nouns are count nouns. We know that we have a lot of um, count nouns, but in this case, many of them, we can count them. And we have some examples. And we are going to see examples in plural and in singular in this case. We are going to see the same word in singular, and also we are going to have the same uh, word or thing in plural. Vamos a ver en los ejemplos. Eh, el mismo objeto, por así decirlo, el mismo objeto, pero lo vamos a ver en singular y en plural. O sea, el mismo objeto en las dos formas. We have one phone, that is the first example. One phone. And we have in singular and in plural two phones. One phone and two phones. Y tenemos algo físico, algo que podemos tocar, un teléfono, o en plural, dos teléfonos or more. Then, another example. One dog. And in plural, two dogs. Then, we have one shirt. And two shirts. So we have in singular any plural, but in, in that case we know that they can be counted. So that is the main thing about this uh, word. However, a few countable nouns only have a plural form in English. In those cases, we know that. Um, we can have a singular and plural, but there are some words that we can use only in plural, because in that case, it's telling us they are more than one. So in that case, we are going to see what are those words that we can have just in plural. So we're going to see, let me see. Um, yes, man and man is a good example, but in that case, we are going to see uh, in that kind of words that we can um, change the way we write the, the plural. Because in that case, man is singular, we have just one man. And we know that when we are using that word, we are just saying that we have one. But when we change the way we, wo uh, we write those words, we know that we are uh, talking about a uh, plural in that case of, of men, because in that case we know that we are talking about more than two or more than three. It's the same uh, case with uh, child and children or person and people. In that case, those words are like, it is not necessary to, to use the articles or to use numbers like in other words, because in that case, when we are using the singular, we have a word. And when we have more than one people, we use another way to write those words. Sí se aplica, ¿verdad? Eso sí se aplica mucho con esto de los nombres contables y no contables. Pero estos no utilizan los artículos en el caso del, del, del plural. Because in, in singular, yes, a man, a man, or one man, one child, un niño, una niña. Pero en plural, men, we know that we are talking about a group of men, um, two or three men, 
or when we are talking about people. One person versus people, a lot of people. So that is a, a good a good example also about the singular and plural nouns. So in this case, we were saying that we have a countable nouns that just have the plural form, or we can use in plural. And in this case, we have the following example. We have clothes. Because in this case, we cannot say one clothes. One clothes is kind of weird because in that case, we specify the um, the piece of clothes that we are using. For example, a shirt, um, a pair of jeans, a t-shirt, a blouse, or something like that. But when we are talking about a group of clothes, in this case, we are going to use clothes with the S. Then we have pants. Even when we are talking about one a pair of pants, or when we are uh, talking about one, we are going to use this form, pants, with the S, not pants, because it is not like the way we uh, write that word. Siempre lo usamos de esa forma, pants, no pants, sin la S, sino que es como la forma en la que se escribe ya la palabra. Then, jeans. Another one, jeans, not jean, jeans, shorts. Because in some cases we can use short, but it is an adjective. Because we are going to say something is short, not the piece of cloth that we are using, short. So in that case, it is necessary to write like in plural. And then, pajamas. That is another word that it is like plural, but it's the way we need to write it. Así se tienen que escribir, incluso cuando solo estamos diciendo, estoy usando mi pijama, una. Obviamente, I am using pajamas with the S. Estoy utilizando pijamas. Se escribe de esa forma y se, eh, es la forma correcta, aunque solo estemos utilizando una, pero es la forma en la que se escribe. Then... Um, there are often used with some sort of quantifiers. That is something very important in this uh, topic about the count and non count nouns. The quantifiers, that is another group of words that we can use to specify how much or how many of one thing we have. In this case, sort of quantifier of quantity warrant to show that the, they are counts, and in this case, we have some words like a pair of, two pairs of pens, or some pens. In this case, when we are using this kind of words that can help us to understand how many things that we have. Los quantifiers son palabras que nos van a ayudar a nosotros a ponerle a, a den, adelante de la palabra que queremos decir. Eh, algunos, un par de... Eh, unos cuantos, that kind of words are the quantifiers or the quantity words that are going to help me to understand that I am counting something. Simple, a sort of.
So in this case, the important phrase is this one, to show how they are counted. Esto nos muestra cómo están siendo contadas estas cosas. Eh, algunos, muchos, pocos, unos cuantos, pares, or something like that, as, as in the example. A pair of pens, two pairs of pens, or some pens. So in that case, the quantifier or quantity word eh, help us to understand how they are counted. So it's going to help us to understand that part. How are count nouns made plural? How can we create this kind of words when we have a, a specific noun? How can we create that names into plural? Now we are going to see how can we change something or a little bit some words to make it plural. It says that account nouns are usually made plural by adding an S or ES at the end. Very, very simple. Some of these words, when you um, want to make them plural, you need to write an S or ES at the end of the word. So we are going to see some examples of this. And we have the first one. It says, one boy, one boy. And we need to change into plural. In this case, two boys. Then we have one folder. And we're going to change it, and we add the S to folders. Then we have one box, and in this case, we have two boxes. And in this one, we add the ES at the end. Then we have one church, and then we have two churches. En esta parte vemos que es bastante sencillo transformar algunas palabras a plural, porque simplemente le agregamos la S o la ES al final. No es tan complicado en ese sentido. But we were talking about some cases in which we need to change the word, like in the in the verbs, because we have the regular and irregular, and we know that the regular verb has like this very, very simple way to, to function, but in the case of the irregular verbs, we need to change the way we write the word. So it is also uh, in many of these kind of words that we are going to change a lot of things. Then it says, if the noun ends in a Y, we need to change the Y to another kind of words that we are going to see to make it plural. In this case, if the word or the noun ends in a Y, and this is applied um, with a lot of words that we are going to change the endings, adding from a letter. A E S.
to make it float up. And in this case, we have two examples. Example number one, one family. One family. And we change to family. Lo cambiamos. Cambiamos la Y por una IES. Y lo convertimos en plural in that case. And the other example is one party. Two party. Simple like that. Then, let's see. However, why, however, if our, uh, if above will proceed, the Y add just an S to make it plural. In este caso, si tenemos una vocal antes de la Y, no le vamos a agregar este cambio del IES, sino que simplemente le agregamos una S al final. Because in that case, it's like functioning as, um, as a vowel in that case. And let's see some examples. We have the word toy. One toy. And we are going to transform into plural. And we are going to say two toys. That is the change. We are just going to add S at the end. And the next one, one donkey. And we have two donkeys. Un juguete, dos juguetes. Un burro, dos burros. So in that case, we are just going to add S to the end of the word to make it plural. Then we have, if the noun ends in O, add ES to make it plural. In this case, if we have O at the end of the word, we are going to use ES or add ES at the end of the word. And we have the examples. One potato. And we are going to make it pull out to potatoes. Then one tomato. And then we are going to change to tomatoes. So in that case, when we have O at the end, we are going to just add ES. Y así transformamos, ¿verdad?, estas palabras. Si tenemos O, solo le agregamos ES. Then, if the noun ends in F or SI, change the F to a B and add ES. Este es como el cambio más grande que vamos a ver. Porque si tenemos palabras que terminan en F, la vamos a cambiar a una B. Totalmente diferente y le agregamos la ES. Aquí sí vamos a hacer un cambio bastante grande en las palabras.
and we have some examples. This one and this one. So it it's really change the form in which we uh, write some words that have S at the end. One tip, two tip. In the case, we are talking about ladrones, and we change the way we write those words. And they are very, very different from the, the first one. So in that case, we change it a lot. Some count nouns have irregular plural forms, and many of these forms came from um, early forms of English. In this case, when we are talking about the language, we know that we have a lot of things to know about the English language, and there are some words that have like a very old way in which those words are uh, written. So in that case, for example, one a foot, and we change in plural uh, to feet. So in that case, it's like something very old to know about the, the words, but let me see the example here, or where the, the example here is. That is the words that we were saying at the beginning. So in this case, we were saying that uh, we have different words that um, depends on early forms in English because we know that English has different uh, stages of construction. And uh, there are some words that came from that uh, change that happen in history of the language. But in this case, we are not going to talk about the history of English. We are just going to see the examples. One foot and in plural, two feet. One person, and we were saying people. But for the example, we are going to write two people because we are going to mark the difference. Then, one tooth, and we change to here. And the last one, one criterion, and we have two criteria. Cambia bastante esa palabra, ¿verdad? Y eso tiene que ver con eh, los cambios que tuvo el idioma a lo largo de la historia, ya que fue no fue algo simple, ¿verdad? Sino que pasaron muchas etapas y hay muchas de esas palabras que vienen de esas etapas. So, in that case, we have uh, this kind of uh, forms in which we are going to use the plural forms. And we have that they are very different from the singular ones, and these are the examples, the same examples as the words that Alicia uh, said at the beginning of the session, because she said men and men, and in this case, it's this, uh, this part of the language in which we have these uh, forms. Tenemos esas formas diferentes que cambian Eh, cuando se convierten en plurales. One foot, two feet. One person, two people. One tooth, two teeth. And one criterion, two criteria. So in that case is to change the way we write the words to express that we are using the plural one.
So, that is the part of the count nouns. Tenemos muchos datos de los nombres contables, no es simplemente decir, ah, yo tengo un huevo y ya está. We have a lot of things to know about it, the words and how can we change from one to other and how to count them and how to write the plural ones. But now we're going to see the non-count nouns, that is the other part of the topic. Vamos a ver los nombres no contables, and in this case, we are going to see some categories. Let me see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight categories of words, because in that case, it is not just talking about something that we can count. In that case, it's to see what are the words and why are they in that category. Because maybe you can uh, think, but that word, I can count them. Maybe, yes, but in that case, it's depending on the context and also the category that we have for those words. Así que vamos a ver la otra parte del tema, que son los nombres no contables. Um, vamos a ver las categorías de estos nombres no contables y ejemplos de palabras que podemos encontrar en cada categoría. Okay, let's see. Nankan nouns. This one. The the question is the same, but in this case we're not going to see or say what are the nankan nouns. We are going to answer the question at the same time. So what is or what are Nankan nouns? And in this case, it says that Nankan or uncountable nouns exist as masses or abstract quantities that cannot be counted. Tenemos estas palabras que son masas, ¿verdad? Eh, que no pueden ser contadas o a, we can say that in this category we can uh, talk about feelings or something imaginary or something that has another uh, way to know how many or how much we have about that thing. Tenemos diferentes formas de medir las cosas. So, en este caso, no es algo físico, sino que tenemos diferentes formas de medición for those words. And it says that they uh, have no plural forms. In this case, non-con nouns don't have plural, because in that case, we know that we can not count in that way. So in this case, we are not going to use plural. No vamos a utilizar los plurales. Also, most English nouns are count nouns, non-con nouns, frequently occur in academic writing. In some cases, it is just for academic writing. Remember, just for academic writing, because in some cases, we have a lot of countable nouns. In this case, it is just for um, academic writing. Okay, we have the, the most important things about the non count nouns, that they exist as masses of quantity that can be, cannot be counted, and also they have no plural forms. So now we are going to see the most common uh, categories of non count nouns.
So we have the category number one. It says a mask. And we have work. We can say, I have a lot of work, but we not, not say, I have one work, because in that case, it is not related to this, um, this thing. In that case, it's just saying, I have a lot of things to do. We can count the activities, like when we are writing, and we can say, ah, can I make a list of the things that I going to do during the day? Yes, but in this case, when we have a lot of things to do in the same moment, we cannot count by separate units. In this case, we have a lot of work to do. And we don't have any specific uh, list, or we cannot touch that um, specific action. Así que cuando decimos, tengo mucho trabajo que hacer, no digo, tengo 10 trabajos que hacer, porque ahí sería otro tipo de actividad, no mis actividades en ese momento. Uh, por ejemplo, I have a lot of work to do because tomorrow I have a meeting, for example. What we are going to do? Maybe we need to write an essay, we need to um, download some photos, uh, we need to... Um, fix some documents, and that is the meaning of this word. La carga de trabajo es lo que tenemos nosotros acá. La carga de trabajo de estrés que nosotros acumulamos para el trabajo es lo que entra en esta categoría. Then, equipment. Homework, another... Uh, a specific word, homework, money, and we can say, ah, oh, but I have some uh, coins, or I have some, uh, I don't know, we can count other things, but in this case, it's not like the paper, in that case, or the uh, coins that we are going to count. We are talking about the um, the amount of money, not the something physical, because in that case it is not money, it's paper. En este caso no vamos a hablar de dinero como, ah, yo tengo dos billetes, porque en este caso sería yo tengo dos piezas de papel, y ahí sí las podemos contar. Pero la cantidad de, de dinero no se cuenta igual que las cosas físicas. I have one hundred dollars or I have five dollars in that case, because it is a um, different way to count money. It is not like we're counting something physical. Because in some cases, we don't have the physical money. We have um, a car, for example, and I can say, I have $20 in my account. And in that case, I don't have the money in my, in my hand. I have it in the bank, so it's something imaginary in that case. Then we have transportation. Clothing. And traffic. Then, for the number two, we have a natural system. Una sustancia natural. Here. Substance. Ice. Water. Fire, wood, blood, hair, gold, and silver. Sustancias naturales o cosas que vienen con la naturaleza. We cannot count that kind of thing. 
And also, I'm just saying, they have another way to take their way or to know how many or how much we have about something. En este caso tienen otras formas de medición, no normalmente como lo hacemos con las otras cosas. Lo medimos de diferentes formas. Then, food, milk, rice. Coffee, bread, sugar, meat, and again, water. Number four, an abstract concept. Un concepto abstracto. In this case, an advice, happiness, health, education, research, knowledge, Information, time. Es una idea abstracta de algo. Un consejo o consejos que no podemos contar. Ah, me dio un consejo. Pero es, eh, lo decimos de esa manera sabiendo que alguien nos ha dado como muchos consejos en uno. Luego la, fel la felicidad no la podemos contar. La podemos sentir y decir, I am really, really happy. Me siento muy, muy feliz o tengo mucha felicidad. But we cannot count it. Health, la salud tampoco se puede contar. Education o a research, un, un, una investigación. The knowledge, we cannot count how um, many knowledge we have in our brain. Cuánto conocimiento tenemos no se mide de forma eh, numérica. La información, we have a lot of information and we cannot count that kind of thing and also the time. Tenemos una medición, tenemos una forma de medir el tiempo, pero no de esa manera que nosotros lo hacemos con las otras cosas. Number five, a game. Poker, tennis, basketball. Hockey. Number six, a disease. Enfermedades, ¿verdad? Ranza. En malaria. Number seven, a subject of a study. And we have economics, biology, history, give me a second place. Audio teacher. Audio.
Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I have a a call, but we are here again. Okay. Then we have a language that is number eight. And we have Arabic. Uh, I mean, language. Then we have Chinese, Spanish, and English. And the last one, and that is number nine, an activity. And it says, in this case, when we are talking about these kind of activities, we are going to use the activities that have the ING form. Así que en estas actividades que no son contables, son actividades que nosotros las utilizamos o le agregamos ING al final. And in this case, we have swimming, dancing, reading, smoking, drinking, and studying. So we have nine categories for these Nankan nouns that we need to know in which cases we are not going to use the plurals because in that case you can see we are not using a plurals in these nouns. We have a mass, a natural uh, substance. We have fluid, an abstract concept, a game, a disease, a subject. We have a language, an activity. So in that case, those are the nine um, categories that we have. Nueve categorías de palabras donde nosotros las vamos a dividir por um, eh, tema, lo podemos decir de esa manera y que sabemos que esos son nombres no contables. And the last thing for that topic is that the non-con nouns do not use the infinitive article A or N, and they can, however, use the definite article the. So, in the count nouns, we can use the articles A and N that are those ones. When we have a count, a count noun, we can say, um, for example, a book. And I am talking about one book. But in the noun count nouns, we are not going to use those articles. We are going to use this one. The influenza, for example. So, in that case, uh, we are saying that para los nombres contables, nosotros podemos utilizar esos artículos A and N, because in that case, we are saying que son nombres singulares, y para ello lo utilizamos. Pero con los nombres no contables, como no tenemos esa categoría de nombres eh, plurales y singulares, vamos a utilizar solo the, porque tampoco tenemos una cantidad en específico y no podemos utilizar a. Ahora, solo una aclaración rápida. In this case, when we have um, vowels, cuando la palabra termina en vocal, we are going to use N. And when the word ends in um, consonant, we are going to use a. Vamos a utilizar N por, eh, por, para palabras que terminan en eh, vocales y palabras que terminan en consonante vamos a utilizar A. And in that case, uh, or in, in that case, is when they begin with the vowel or the consonant. But in some cases, there are something um, different with that that we need to be very, very careful. Hay algunas palabras que inician con vocal, pero 
suenan como que llevaran un, una consonante. Si suena como consonante, le vamos a, vamos a utilizar lo que es A. Si la consonante sonara como una vocal, que en muchos de los casos es cuando lleva la H, eh, le vamos a, utiliz vamos a utilizar N, porque suena como vocal. También tenemos que tener cuidado con los sonidos, no solo con la forma en la que se escribe, sino también con los sonidos que nos pueden llegar a confundir un poco a la hora de utilizar los artículos. So, in that case, we know that for count nouns, we are going to use the articles or the numbers, and for the non count nouns, we are just going to use the article the. That is very, very general in that case, because when we're uh, using general words, we are going to use that article. So, It, it is like almost at the hour. Just see that time is really, really fast those days. So we are going to end the session here because we are almost at the hour. And we are going to see each other tomorrow in session number four. It's really, really fast. We are going to be in session number four and we are going to end the first week. So remember that you have to work on the platform and because tomorrow is just the last day of this week and you need to have your sections done every week. And if you have time to do another exercises of the other sections, you can do it also. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in session number four. Tell me, Nelly. Miss, uh, just one question. Uh, I I don't have access to my platform. I don't know why, but I can't uh, uh, log in to my platform. Okay. Um, if you can write your name on the on the group, you can uh, write a message and say, "I am Nelly Elizabeth, and I am in the group." Uh, in this case, you have you are in the group English Intermedio Uno, and I don't have access to the platform. I'm going to send that message to the um, the support. Voy a mandar ese mensaje donde usted pone su nombre, a qué grupo pertenece. Yo lo mando al grupo de support para que le den acceso o le ayuden con el acceso. El mensaje se lo envío acá en el grupo. Ah. Para yo solo reenviarlo al grupo de support. Ok. Ok. See you, teacher. Take See care. You. Good night. Bye, good night. Good night.